Um, I'll tell you, when I, when I first became a Christian, I was very moved by the um, abortion, uh, by, by the fact that the United States had allowed pretty much uh, abortion everywhere for about any reason. And so I actually voted twice after I became a Christian and I marched sometimes in the pro-life march in D.C. And then one day I realized that it wasn't directly to me, but I heard a person who was on the other side um, talking about these people, these Christians who try to impose their morality on someone who's not a Christian. And I started to realize, well, that's not right. Okay, to try to coerce someone to live the right way, that's not right. And then I realized uh, from hearing her talk more that people like me weren't just putting a wall between ourselves and her. I was putting a wall between her and Jesus because she saw me as one of those Jesus people. Mm. And so Jesus is like that. Jesus tries to uh, tell me what to do. Now, he may tell us what to do, but that's after we surrender to him, after we see mm -hmm. what he's done for us. She hadn't seen that. And so um, that really, I already was non-resistant, but I didn't realize I was making a mistake there by being political and by doing those demonstrations. Everything that Christians do should be um, to draw people, not to force them. Mm -hmm. And so this is where things get kind of messy because it, it seems it seems to me, and I, I wish we had better data, I guess, on this, but it seems that our Anabaptist people ha are starting to lose that yeah. and getting very involved in different mm -hmm. things. And we were talking off camera about what some of those are. Maybe we won't get into specifics, <laughs> um, but, you know, where, where Anabaptists are getting pretty aggressive in, you know, politics and like, mm -hmm. if we can just change this thing, then then we can fix that. And, and you know, really getting mixed up in this stuff. And, and it just, it feels like we, we are really missing some critical pieces here. Well, everything Jesus did was more in that category of wooing, you know, mm. inviting people, wooing people. And he did warn them, if you don't come to me, you will go in a direction you don't want to go. You're going to end up in hell, just to be blunt. But he, he always offered the the good thing that come to him and, and he will give us rest. Um, and that's what we're supposed to be offering uh, to others. And um, even if you don't want to look at what Jesus himself says, the political realm is not the place to get change. If you, if one side gets 51% of the vote, then they get to write the laws. But the next year, when there's another election, the other side might get 51% of the vote and then they can change the laws. This isn't what, this isn't worth it. Mm. What's worth it is to one by one change the hearts mm. and just changing the laws. It has an effect and I'm not saying it doesn't have an effect, but it's not what we should be looking for. We should be looking for getting people fully invested in being a Jesus person, you know, looking to him to know how to live and getting our, our life from him, actually. And, um, you know, I can't imagine Jesus, I'm just going to say it, storming the Capitol or even protesting like I used to. I don't see him doing that. I see him um, caring about the down and out and dealing with with those people personally rather than you know, getting the government to do it. Mm. That, that's, that's not, that's a dead end. And it, and it changes so yeah. quick. You know, one side might be in for a while and, and get what they want. And the, oh, that's another thing too. I just want to say this. When I look at, okay, we have two parties in the United States, mm. the Democrats and the Republicans. Some of the things that the Democrats want are at least um, something like what the Bible talks about. And the same thing for the Republicans, but it's a different set of things. But that's not where you get, it's not government that's actually going to deliver. So the Democrats seem to care more for the down and out. And the Republicans seem to care, seem to more about morality and things like that. At least that's how it's often looked at. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't get either of those things through the government. You get, you get some, you get some financial, um, 
relief for the poor. And uh, the government says that that you can um, make your, you know, develop your own business or something like that to give you that freedom. But uh, really what what we ought to be striving for in our own lives and in the lives of others is something that comes from a heart change, not from what the law. And in fact, we should be able to live. Christians should be able to live under an authoritarian government like Nero's mm. or a democracy. Well, that, that shouldn't be our main issue. Uh, there were many Christians, they suffered, but there were many Christians who lived under the Soviet mm. Union. And they gave a good witness. When the Soviet Union fell, a lot of people who, while, while, while communism was in power, they were afraid. And sometimes they were communists. But they, were, they, they, they knew about the Christians. They probably were curious. Why are they so strange? Hmm. I, I visited Latvia right after it became free. Hmm. And a large number of people who used to be communists came to the church, heard the gospel, and gave their lives. And I talked to some of them, and they said, while communism was in power, I thought it was right. And I gave my life for it. And then it fell, and my life felt empty. And then I saw these people, and I wondered. And I came mm. in a church. I never would have come in a church before. And I heard something that really made sense to me, touched my heart. Mm. That's what you need. I mean, the communists tried to make the Christians communists by coercion. <laughs> Didn't work. The Christians were there after the after there was freedom. They were there and they were the 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 former communists had seen them and and knew they were strange and in curiosity went into the church and they heard something that that rang mm -hmm. a bell in their heart. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's the thing that that's what that's how we change people. Mm -hmm. That's how we change the culture, one person at a time. Mm -hmm.